Hi everyone, we're back. Uh, hive number seven. It's been five days since I've since I put this uh, double double queen screen on here. Uh, they are used usually to. Uh, some people like to have doubles, like a double queen system, but the queens need to be separated. So that's what this was originally intended for. Uh, I've tried it before, never really found it useful, so I don't use it as that. Uh, but it is great when you're introducing uh, two colonies to each other uh, to, to unite them because you got two separate entrances, you got ventilation through the entire thing, but the bees can't fight. Uh, eventually, after three or four days and they get comfortable with each other, the pollen carriers will basically move from using this entrance to the, to the rear entrance. Uh, today we're going to unite the two hives and I'll show you all that. I only really want to show you because I want to show you really what they, what, how you can tell if they have successfully united. Now I did go back into the nuke uh, and I checked for the queen. I found the queen. She's laying eggs. Uh, the old queen that was, was down in here. Okay, here's the queen uh, in this hive. This is the drone layer. Um, There she is. So this is what I believe is a drone layer. She's laying eggs in worker comb and drone comb. Some of them have, to have hatched and developed into larvae and uh, others haven't. Uh, I mean, they're still eggs. So I'm going to give them a, a little time, a, a time enough to know whether those are drones or not. Because uh, maybe this was a queen that, uh, I'm trying to cast my own shadow here. Maybe this was a queen that uh, was made it took a while to to figure out how to fertilize eggs uh, it would have been an awful long time but it was it was in that time period that 23 day time period now what's more likely is that she just uh is old ran out of sperm and then all of a sudden she just is only laying drone eggs so she was the same queen that laid the worker uh the stuff that developed into workers about it's been about 30 days now uh, and now, you know, she just can no longer lay a fertilized egg because she looks like a very mature queen. All I'm going to do basically is, is open up this hive, uh, smoke them a little bit, take this hive body off, take the screen off, sh and I'm going to shake the bees from up here on top of the screen, say on the inner cover or something, down into this hive body and basically see if they fight. That's the best way to tell if it's been enough time. Now, five days, I can tell you right now, is enough time. Uh, they've already got the scent. Uh, the old queen has been removed for five days. These guys realize this is their new queen. You know, uh, there's not going to be a problem, but I'll show it to you anyway. So let me change uh, the camera view. Well, I can do it right here for a moment. smoke here see how they go right in the hive that's the sign that you want to see now some of them flew up and they're kind of okay you can see how they're using this entrance basically um, a lot of them flew around from the other side. I just couldn't get my camera over here quite fast enough. But what you will see is some bees building up on this because I'm going to remove their entrance basically right now. Uh, and I'll show you what they're going to start doing. So here is basically the test of truth here. So you see all these bees that are up here on the screen. I'm just smoking them so they don't uh, get erratic on me. But what I'm going to do is I'm going to shake them into the hive. And if there was some kind of sign that these hives had not united yet, they would actually be start fighting. I'm going to get stung working them like this. Now, you see a lot of bees flying around. Some of them are landing and going in, some of them aren't. 
Okay, there you go. So nobody's fighting. Now we'll just watch them. See what they start doing. We want to make sure we don't see a whole bunch of fighting uh, because that means that the two highest, for whatever reason, did not unite. Usually that's because there ends up being a second queen down here. But the reality is we know that there's not because we found her and she's in the other hive. Uh, also, she wasn't laying viable eggs. So, yeah, see, they're just calming down and they're landing. And now, now a lot of them are just kind of flying around. Uh, but then you'll see them land and go in right where the entrance was. And they go right down into the hive. So that's how you can tell the hive is fine. Now, the, the second part of this is not uh, as easy. I'm going to turn this hive around. It was like this. I'm going to turn it around like this. So that what used to be the front of the hive, and see a lot of them are coming in now and flying in, but what used to be the front of the hive is still the front of the hive. And just kind of, you know, set that on there lightly to the point where you can just slide it. And that way you don't really crush anybody. But you see how now they're just building up right here? That's gonna happen today. That's the downfall of using this method. But what's gonna happen, I'm gonna now put this inner cover on here with the vent facing this, uh, this direction. It was facing the other direction. Uh, just to provide better, you know, ventilation characteristics through the hive. Now I'm facing it this way. So what's going to happen is I'm going to put the lid on and, the, and I'm going to slid the light, lid all the way back. So if you can imagine the lid being here, the bees will be able to go up and in or out. And that is what they will do. They will congregate here for a few, you know, minutes, hours. You can already see some of them making their way up. And then they will go up into that ventilation hive and they'll use that. Now, if you find that this is an issue um, where, you know, you have the bees now using the rear entrance as the front entrance, then what you can do is uh, wait until night and wait a couple days, but wait, wait until night. And then when the bees are all in the hive, spray a little water up there or whatever. And then you just slide this forward and close off this ventilation hive. If you're really good, you can get it to where there's still airflow through there, but the bees can't make it through there. And then, you know, I only want like an eighth of an inch, basically. Uh, so air does move through there, but it doesn't move. Uh, the bees can't move through there. And what'll, what'll happen is they will be forced now to learn how to use the front entrance. Uh, and then they will, and then give, give that a day, 24 hours. And so you close it off one night and then the next night you can come back and open it up. And then by that time, they will have relearned where they need to go. Literally just a few seconds after my camera just shut off, my GoPro just shut off during this footage, a really cool thing happened. Uh, a bee started scenting or nazanoving is what I call it. Um, this is a bee that is nazanoving or scenting. You can see that the back is arched and you can see a little gland that I'll zoom in here on a second. That is the nazanov gland. And what it, it does is communicates things in context to other bees. In the case that was happening uh, today, uh, it found the entrance the vent through the vented inner cover and it crawled back down and started scenting. The scent apparently smells like bananas. I've never really been able to smell it. It started scenting and the bees just started marching right up in in the hive. Uh, that was that was pretty cool. It communicates in context, meaning if this is a swarm, which is from this picture here, it would communicate that the queen has been found and that if you follow this pheromone that you will find the queen as well. The first example I'm going to show you is the swarm from which that last picture was taken. You can see them marching right in. Uh, there's a number of bees, actually quite a few, that are uh, scenting. And, they're, and they finally we got the queen in the swarm and they're scenting that, hey, the queen is this way. And then you can see the bees just react completely and start just marching right in the hive. You can see this on pretty much any swarm once you get the queen in the uh, in the hive. And so as I zoom in, you'll see I'll circle one of the bees that is scenting, but there's a number of them right next to them. And there you can see that. In this example, the same thing. They're scenting. It is a swarm. 
uh, but I will uh, zoom in and I will show you that there's a difference between a bee that's scenting and a bee that's just uh, ventilating. The one on the red is ventilating, the one in the blue is, is uh, scenting, or nasanoving, as I like to call it. So that's it. The hive will now be fine, uh, and they will probably learn to just use the other entrance in the next day or two, probably tomorrow. And if not, you can always shut this down to where they can't use it just for a day and then open it back up so they have good ventilation. And that is it for this video. Let me know what you think. Subscribe if you liked the video. And uh, I'm sorry it was a long one, but this was kind of a complex procedure and I wanted to show you everything involved. Thanks for watching.